Welcome back to the VTU e Shikshana program. Today I am going to continue with the storm water management which is the module 2 of uh, uh, the uh, you know the uh, subject uh, building services 1 where today we are going to basically deal with drainage hierarchy, runoff, open drain and various different systems of uh, open and closed drain. What is drainage hierarchy? The hierarchy which is involved in stormwater drainage along with its uh, runoff and uh, closed drain and open drain. So, we all know that uh, the storm water is basically the receiving uh, water body of the rain water from many systems, right. So, all of these systems discharge them into the sea, lake or river. So, their primary drainage system which is basically called as the main drain also called as the intercepted drain because it carries the city's primary drain and this particular primary drain which is to be designed is supposed to be designed with high quality engineering skills. The secondary drainage system is are much smaller drains within the neighborhood and they are called as micro drainage or laterals which are serving smaller catchment area. So, any drainage basically would have both these systems both secondary as well as primary. The primary would basically have all these interceptors which are bas uh, which are like the trunk sewers as I mentioned in the earlier class. They would be trunk sewers then connected to the main or the interceptor sewers and these sewers would be connected to the lateral sewers which are called as the secondary drainage system. So, all of these systems are collecting all the drain and then letting out all the water as discharge into our natural sources. So, what are the factors which basically affect the water flow? One soil conditions, water seeps more readily into sandy soil than into clay or rocky ground. So, you have to keep in mind while designing the whole uh, sewage system that what kind of conditions of the uh, soil are prevalent at that particular period of existence. And the terrain is the second point. Here water flows more rapidly due because of the steep slope. So, very less time is left in terms of infiltration when it stands or moves slowly in a flat area. So, this is also another major concern in terms of the contours of the site. Land use vegetable uh, sorry vegetation traps much of the water and also loses the soil thus making infiltration easier. Roofs and also the paved surfaces on the other hand prevent any kind of infiltration. So, the kind of land use the kind of vegetation there and what exactly is the condition upon which uh, you know the surfaces are uh, you know laid out making all these uh, easier for infiltration should also be kept in mind. The coefficient of runoff as I mentioned in the previous class should be calculated and thus the higher the runoff coefficient in areas of clay soil or rocky on steep slope and in dense built up area with le lesser vegetation it would be lower. As an example of this the quantity of water that is to be drained from a high density housing might be at least 5 to 6 times greater than it was in the undeveloped area which was covered with vegetation. So, if we actually think and calculate all of these spaces, uh, all of these factors like the soil condition, the terrains and the land use and the coefficient of runoff and properly design and lay out our sewers with for our storm water drainage, then we can actually have a higher density or greater density that is almost like 5 to 6 times of the water which could be drained off when compared to something which is under developed or undeveloped. The runoff probability is usually expressed as return period because in a rainstorm with a probability of 1 is to 20 of happenings in any particular year a return period of 20 years is what is calculated for a storm. This does not mean that it happens every 20 years, but that on an average will happen at an average of 5 times a century at least. So, if a drainage system is designed for an unusually severe rainstorm with a 100 year return period, it might never be used within its lifetime. 
because the lifetime of a sewer as I mentioned in the previous class is around 50 to 60 years. So, if we are basically trying to think about a severe rainstorm which might happen within a 100 period of time, you know you have to be very sure about what kind of storms are you using in what contextual conditions. The money spent in constructing a system with such a large capacity might have been better spent on building smaller drains in areas that have no drains. And choosing the optimum return period for the design of an urban drainage system is a difficult judgment because upon this judgment you cannot risk the drains overflowing and you cannot damage the cost of the, the buildings by bringing up larger drains and then these larger drains might even not help with preventing it. So, return period of 5 years is something that is basically used to design a primary drainage system in tropical cities, but a shorter period for micro drainage within residential areas where an occasional overflow is less likely to cause serious damage. So, instead of thinking and considering anything for a period of 100 years or 50 years, always keep in mind that we can design something for 5 years or keep it shorter for 3 years or lesser. So, that we can have much suitable micro drainages within our residences, so that that is where it gets drained and may be utilized for further usages than an occasional overflow which is to be considered for every 100 years. And the damage that is done by uh, storm water to the roads is often the major justification that people give for drainage in low income areas. On steeper slopes, a single heavy rainstorm might make the drains overflow and can cause a lot of damage that is enormous damage might happen by erosion. So, a longer return period can be justified only in flatter areas. So, if you are trying to think of something like this, this is a flatter area. So, here the return period could be longer, but if it is slopey and if it is dif difficult with respect to construction, then you can think of a shorter period of time there. Now, what is a storm drain? A storm drain is basically defined as that portion of the storm drainage system that actually receives all the runoff from the inlets and it conveys the runoff to some point where it is then discharged into a channel or a water body or even a pipe system. This consists of many pipes or at least one pipe and many pipes which would be connecting at one or more inlets. This storm drain might be a closed conduit, open conduit or even sometimes a combination of both the types of conduits. The terminology storm sewer has been in general use for many years. It is gradually being replaced with the term storm drain nowadays to differentiate between sanitary sewers and storm sewers. So, before people would call it as a storm sewer and today we call it as storm drain. Now, these drains are basically designed to drain all the excess rain as well as groundwater from paved surfaces, parking lots, sidewalks and even roofs. The storm drains basically vary in sizes as well as designs from smaller residential dry wells to larger municipal systems. So, based on the area context and even the requirements, the various designs are available in the market and we can pick up anything that is customized to us. And they are fed by street gutters. So, these are street gutters on most of the motorways, freeways as well as other busy roads, as well as towns and areas which experience heavy rainfall like coastal cities and coastal areas and coastal towns experience regular storming. So, you have to keep in mind about the heavy rainfalls there and then the flooding. So, a proper drainage system should be designed for such places to drain the storm water which is either untreated and then let out into the rivers or streams. If you look at the hierarchy, we know this is a this is a road right and we have drains. This could be the drains which are designed 
and that is the contour lines. So, at every 10 degrees there is a rise in the contour. So, turn out drains are basically to divert like if this is steep. Now, you can see that this is steep. Okay. So, a continuous steep is difficult for us to control the flood. So, what we do is we kind of drain it by interrupting and diverting the water in another angle so that the water changes its direction and then it would not flood this kind of a storm drain. And how do we do that? There are various types of constructions for steep drains. We can either have baffle walls like constructing baffle walls like that so that we obstruct the storm water there or maybe even try to have steps or bring in check walls through your drain systems so that we can actually check all the water before it directs into the main sewer line. In an area with a moderate ground slope with at least 4 to 10 percent of drainage channels might be lined with concrete, masonry or vegetation. So, to prevent scouring we are uh, trying to see as to what are the different ways in which we can check wallet or even provide dissipators. Now, these are certain cross sections like this is a moderately ground slope. So, you also have a drainage channel and this is lined by stones right. So, this is one way in which the stones prevent the undercutting of the storm and these are laid layer by layer through the longitudinal section to prevent any kind of undercutting or as I mentioned in the previous slide here we could even have steps. So, this is the original slope you see the bottom line here this is the original slope where we have to basically assume that the slope might have a lot of erosion. Now, to control the erosion we are according to the longitudinal section we could have a lot of wooden slices there like that. So, these stakes could also reduce the kind of erosion there and maybe only bring in the uh, rain water along the storm sewers. Or the next thing is we can even have gablons. So, these gablons prevent undercutting of tree roots and all of that. So, we can provide this, this is the slope that is already existent in the contour. So, we are providing this slope. So, the rain water basically th follows through the cross section only through this gablon. In a flat area, if for example, if this is a flat area, right, we have all these ditches with single drain water. So, what we can do is if this is the natural drain of the whole system there, we can have a discharge point, all right, an inlet point and then we can discharge with a sluice gate or a lift gate through which the water flows out to the polder. Now, this is a, these are polders. Polders are uh, you know spaces, uh, areas where water is stored for a longer period of time. So, here we can have unlined ditches which are cut at right singles of the drain from the polder areas and whenever we need the water to stay within our crops or irrigational farms, we can actually close the lift gate and the water flows in and the uh, lower tide would be created. But when the tide increases, we can open the sluice gate and the water can also be pumped out. And these are dikes which are all along the farm which are basically laid so that the water flows along the dikes this way and that is the water. You see the water which is at a contextual distance only. And if we have any flat areas where we are constructing uh, channels, we have to make sure if this is a concrete lining that we are placing along with the line channel, if there is water flow, the water would flow through this sloping floor and then enter into the line channel. So, we would have a channel for low flow also if in case the rainfall or uh, because of water, the water level increases also called as the flood flow, then the water would have enough space before it enters into our 
habitable spaces. Or we can also have an unlined channel. Now, for example, for low flows, this is the low flow water level and this is for the flood flow. So, the sites are basically studded with grass or planted with vines. So, we can also have some kind of crops being grown there. So, this is a typical composite drainage channel for flat areas. In the flat areas, we also have drains which are open. Now, what are open drains? Open drains could basically have a type of this kind of a grill, which is basically like the uh, put against the flow of the water. When the water flows and any waste uh, which comes out of the waste that comes out of street washers or even because of animal waste and all would get stuck there in this grill and it would be cleaned easily with any kind of a rake. So, this section would be at least for a 10 centimeter spacing and for these kind of open drains we can again have uh, unlined uh, drains which are basically partially lined or even unlined. So, this is an unlined drain an open drain. So, the water during low level would be there and during uh, flood level would reach the highest level and then partially lined. So, you are partially lining it. So, the water remains there during the low levels at least till there during the high level or the flood levels. And this is a line drain where you are lining it through and through from the road section to the drain. So, during a low level it flows still there and then we will also have some kind of a vent there and then this would seep in all the water from there if in case it has to percolate back into the ground. <coughs> now, these are the various types of drainages that we see in terms of lining. The weep holes as I mentioned this is basically so that the water can seep back into the ground these are provided to weep in all the water that might come there okay, and then it could percolate back into the ground this is the ground water table. So, weep holes could have a diameter of 10 meter and they are provided at every 500 mm these are concrete hole, hollow blocks or bricks that are placed. The most common failure of this kind of lining is due to the omission of weep holes. So, if we do not have uh, weep holes in any of our systems, then there might be a failure in our drainage system there. These weep holes are provided if it is a natural stone barrier uh, lined uh, drainage. So, these act like weep holes and the water seeps in from the drainage if it is needed from the rocks and the rocks could be plastered with weak cement or a lime or sand mixture. These are other various sections like this could be a temporary lining which could hold all the newly excavated soil and you can plant it with grasses or place some kind of seeds to improve the stability of the soil here. Or if that is seen in the side view you see we could also have some kind of a lattice like a wooden or a bamboo lattice which is soaked in the oil to minimize rotting and grass is planted on all these holes. So, these bamboo stakes were as play, placed at every internal uh, diameter of 1 meter and when the water comes in it is only the water that is entering because there are plants there the plants we would also have some kind of vegetation being thought of in terms of these kind of drainages. When drainages are combined, so now that is the design of a road and a drain in one pipe, they are all compacted. You see stone and gravel, the slope is at least like 5 percent. So, this is the drain and that is the road and that is the colored. So, that is a combination of both or we can even have something like a concrete one here and then this could be the lining of the street on either side. In section this would be a concrete cover which would have to be lifted to clean the kind of drains.
There is another combined uh, system that is used for footpaths. Uh, this is one example of what uh, we saw in Europe. So, they heard the drain is made out of prefabricated elements. So, this is a stairway because there is a footpath and you have uh, all these uh, step channels under the stairway <coughs> and each of the channels which are provided under the pathway would have inlet holes. So, the water enters, water enters into these you know inlets which are under the pathway and the pathway is covered with the channel cover. So, people are basically walking here, the water is basically entering from this level and we would have the stairway which is connecting on the footpath. So, nobody actually sees the visibility of this particular pattern of water is not seen whereas, this is all concealed with the pathway which is covered. open drains, there are different ways in which open drains are laid out. One is you have these invert bricks which are placed crosswise and then we have side bricks which are placed lengthwise. This is one section. The second section is where a sand bedding of 5 centimeter deep is provided at the uh, semicircular channel and then a slope on all the sides is used so that the water can run parallel to the drain and not get stuck at all the sides. This is a precast channel. So, we have a sand bedding which is 5 centimeter deep, the channel is there and then besides it we would have some kind of weak concrete just to line it up and then we would have brickwork which would increase the depth of the storm pipe and then we would start rendering this with cement. So, these are the three different ways in which open drains are seen in our system and the other uh, drains are the closed drains. So, we would have a longitudinal section of a 1 meter all along with a lesser width and that would be laid. So, this is the end to end connection details. So, this is actually laid here and you see that is a normal reinforced cement pipe for drainage. Otherwise, we also have something called as a bell and spigot arrangement for reinforced concrete pipe where combined sewers are actually seen. So, we would have mortar there and a rubber gasket which would connect both the bell as well as spigot arrangement. So, there is drain 1 and there is drain 2 and both of them are getting combined here. So, when this kind of combination happens, this kind of a section basically works easily upon our settling up. The various other methods of casting uh, prefabricated elements onto our drainage channel. One is an outer mould, so that is an outer mould where you have a mould on top, an inner mould where an inner mould is basically provided inside the culvert or there is another secondary mould which is basically put up as a shield. So, a mould shield is provided or we also have concrete which is poured upon the outer mould or a mould which is removed after 24 hours and then we only get the um, casing of it and then we, we use this and this is also called as the Bangkok drain element because what they do there is they keep the concrete they pour the concrete, they let the moulds there and after 24 hours the moulds are removed. So, you have this concrete curve for at least 5 to 18 days they water it, once they water it the concrete curve actually stays through and through. Or we also have this Rurki drain element which is basically seen in the Indian context where you have a mould set up, okay. it is almost like a children's ring. Okay. There is a mould which is put up on the brick body which is curved. So, you apply concrete over it like a collar. Once that is applied, this concrete uh, collar is applied and then you see this kind of a lining happens through and through. So, this could be many such sections which are working all along the drain. So, this is the next step laying of the pipes. So, since the slope here is uh, 
being worked on for a closed train. The method of constructing is basically how, how do we first work on it? First we mark the water level, then we figure out the distance between each of the poles that is 10 meters at least, mark the water level after a spacing and measure the depth of the trench. Have a plastic tube which is filled with water, so we understand the water level from uh, point 0.1 to point 0.2 dig at least 0.96 meter to give that kind of a slope. So, the water flows all along the slope and if the slope if it is 0 0.004 meters per distance then have a depth of at least 0 0.96 meters. So, this is done along a water hose level, it is very easy to construct and uh, you know this is how it is actually done in on site also. Once that is done you clean up your whole system, the whole uh, dug up system, plant some trees, start giving finishing lines, start compacting it all around all right and then also start working on how exactly transportation can be brought forward to lay the pipes. We should also have a supervisor who is going to look into all these works together while finishing and clearing is being done transport all of those pipes which have come and been you know which are being produced and maybe prefabricated outside the site or maybe in situ which are watered and cured and you know, you know they are guarded and then transported. Once they are uh, transported we compact the soil, we start building up the sewers and while, while we are doing it this continuously happens while we are digging, we are shipping and we are providing the slope, so that the kind of slope is maintained while the slope, uh, while the sewers are being put up. And then we calculate the dimensions, then make surveys and actually build up the estimation and align it according to the setting gradients. So, this is a whole process of constructing for a closed train, which you can see in one particular um, image as all the tasks of drainage construction are seen right from clearing the space you know digging up and then planting the sewer lines, planting the water uh, you know plants there, uh, building up the sewers along the slope, digging it further, shipping it, producing it on the mass scale, curing it, transporting it and also supervising it until the final stage where we are basically trying to estimate the whole process. Now, why is all of these done? Because we need to know that there are various functions of a storm water drain. Now, what are the functions of a storm water drain? A storm water drain basically includes uh, roof drains, includes gutters, it also includes uh, storm drains, the road drains catch basins or even storm water pipes. So, all these together remove all the rain water from all the exposed portions of our con concealed surfaces or even gray surfaces and they discharge to an approved point of disposal. So, we have to keep in mind about how we are letting out all the surface runoff right from the catchment that is our uh, uh, roof to our gutter, from the gutter it enters into the building. Um, sewer to the road sewer and then this is the catch basin, the, there is an inlet pipe and an outlet pipe. So, the inlet would be higher and then the outlet would be lower. So, once it lets in, it enters into the major storm water pipe which is maybe you know where all the private and public boundaries are accessed. What are the variations or comparisons that we see in terms of uh, both open drainage system and closed drainage system. An open drainage system basically uses swales and it also uses open channels to convey storm water as well as often integrated with low impact development techniques. Whereas, a closed drainage system uses pipes, culverts and manholes to convey the storm water to detention basins or other centralized infiltration areas. So, here we are basically using uh, channels to convey the storm water and this is basically for low impact techniques. 
but a closed drainage system uses the whole appurtenances that we mentioned in the previous classes by introducing or conveying the storm water into the system through detention basins or even through a, um, center, other centralized infiltration areas. The storm water management systems are designed for these kind of characteristics on the site to avoid any kind of environmental impacts. And also the most cost effective monitoring and maintenance is done only after the project is complete. Water flows a natural path. So, designing a system that respects the characteristics of your site and planning for a proper monitoring and maintenance schedule goes a long way towards successful storm water management. So, while trying to understand storm water management, you have to keep in mind as to if it is low impact development, then we can only provide open drainage and let it off. If it is you know centralized infiltration spaces that we have to think of, then a proper closed drainage system can be designed avoiding any kind of environmental impact and also to have the project to be cost effective by actually understanding your site and context. So, how do we understand the site and context is by understanding the characteristics of the site, understanding what exactly is needed for our site. You do not have to design according to your whims and fancies, but try to see that we are sorting out a project in according to its existence. Now, what are open drains? I have been talking about open drain, open drain and open drain. Now, let me just give you a brief about open drain. Open drains are the oldest method of drainages which are carried by ditches and sumps. They are used to lead the water clear to the work or natural drainage through depressions, culverts or even pits which are connected to the underground drainage system. These open drains have the advantage that they can receive all the overland flow directly, but the disadvantages often outweigh the advantages. The main disadvantages are loss of land, interference with the irrigation system, splitting up of the land into small parcels that might hamper mechanized farming and also burden of maintenance. Nevertheless, there are cases where open drains are used excessively. For example, peat soils and very saline land under a mon monoculture of rice. The requirements for these kind of open drains are, these drains shall be V-shaped or trapezoidal cross section. They shall not have a grade of less than 1 percent. They should avoid recharging groundwater, encouraging shallow water table and creating a worsening salinity, degradation of adjacent land. So, the whole process of an open drain and its movement begins at the primary drain which are residences, uh, you know from there it enters into the secondary drain, then through the flush drain or the trunk drains, then enters into the natural waterway and the secondary waterway and then enters into the stream. So, this is the whole process of cyclic process of how the open drain basically works. So, it is all open all along its journey, it is all flowing through the open channel system. This open drain basically if you notice would be there in and around your own habitable spaces. So, you would see that there is a direction of flow which has been designed there. You would also see that there is a catchment drain which is basically catching up all the water through its inlets and letting it out through its direction of flow by utilizing the trenches that have been dug for the movement of the water. Now, these trenches work uh, right at the subsoil level as well as the drain level for any kind of an environment. So, if you see if this is the trench that has been dug for an open drain, you would have you know a section where this does not enter into the drain system and that is the sewer. So, all the water comes in and gets collected and then moves into the sub drain system. Cleaning of maintenance of open drains is very difficult, but it is very necessary because blockages that would cause that would happen upon your 
open drain system are very common and they might cause spillover and could also cause flooding. So, a solution is to close the uh, open drain with concrete slabs. So, when this is closed with concrete slabs, the open drains would be open only at convenient uh, distances for easy cleaning and maintenance. The different types of open drains, unlined drains and line drains. In the unlined drains again we have catch drains which are basically the catch basin drains, the contour drains, diversion drains and channel systems and line drains have batter drains and curbs and gutters. Now, what is a catch drain? A catch drain is provided above the top of any cutting or along the toes of embankments before the construction of any kind of a roadway. The edges of all these catch drains are positioned not to be less than 2 meters or the top of the cuttings of the toes of embankments. So, more than necessary is needed to maintain the full capacity of the drains. That is the contour drain, they are basically cutoffs or temporary excavated channels or ridges or a combination of both. They are constructed across the contour of an area of land that has been disturbed by earthworks. So, if there is a lot of earthwork being done and there is a lot of disturbance in its own contextual values. So, we develop a contour drain or it gets developed by itself naturally and this contour drain basically is like a temporary excavated space or a channel or a ridge which is basically working to drain off the surface uh, runoff. A diversion drain. These are drains or cutoffs which are temporarily excavated again. They are a combination of both which are constructed across the contour of an area or across the area of a land that has been disturbed by earthworks. So, if there is a lot of earthwork that is happening, we basically provide a diversion drain so that the water gets diverted and does not disturb the whole mechanism of the movement of the uh, storm water. An open channel drain. This is a flow of water in a conduit with a free surface at atmospheric pressure. So, at the atmospheric pressure it suddenly becomes free. This is an open channel and it is mostly channeled or governed by gravity that is there is a slope there and because of the slope the water keeps moving. The classification of open channel system could be in two different categories, one is artificial, one is man made. Swales are simply shallow low depressions in the ground which are designed to encourage the accumulation of rain during a storm and they hold it within it for few hours or days to let it infiltrate into the soil. Now, these are called as swales. So, these swales can be installed separately or as part of the larger system of catchment where we have to think about the rainwater, the cisterns and also other conservation measures. So, this is one way of conserving rainwater by building up swales all across your line of uh, habitation. Or we also have something called as lined open drains. Now, these lined open drains include all the concrete gutters or channels and also curbs and gutters. Before placing any kind of lining material, the foundation material should be shaped and compacted to form a firm base for the lining. Stone pitching should also happen and that would consist of some kind of a durable rock which would be not less than 100 mm thick. The spaces between all these stones that are laid or blocks should not exceed 200 uh, sorry 20 mm in width. So, there is a minimum width given and maximum length put forward. So, all along the drain we are lining it and if the lining is only until a certain level the water during a flood basically reaches that level. But if you would like the water to not enter into a walkable spaces then we can increase the depth of the section there. The main advantages of any closed drain is that they do not take up any kind of surface space. They reduce the risk of children playing in and falling into the polluted water 
and the possibility of any vehicles getting damaged in the drains or falling into them. It is nevertheless a fact that open drainage channels are used and maintained in good hygienic and aesthetic conditions in sophisticated cities like Amsterdam and Singapore. So, we can also work on an open drainage system if you are actually trying to have some kind of a sophisticated condition. Closed drains should be built in low income topical areas only after very careful consideration of the other options. So, otherwise an open system and an open drain is one of the most convenient methods that the whole world follows in terms of usage as well as maintenance. Now, what is a closed drain? Now, there are various types of closed drains. This is a French drain and that is a tile drain. <coughs> What are the benefits of open and closed drainage system? An open system is basically going to recharge our aquifers as well as protect our environment. Their solution to pollution is dilution and their open systems also increase the kind of water to break down pollutants. Open system is also low maintenance, it is easier to perform inspections since they are not buried. And it also wicks off the water at the roadway itself by pre preventing any kind of chemical interrupts, uh, interceptions. Whereas, a closed drainage system has water on road en route until uh, the catch basin. It has less a surface area which is dedicated to convey water. It reduces erosion by limiting contact with erosive soils. It also conveys a lot of leakage in areas of denser development, so that cannot be seen and noticed. So, you have to be very careful about considering a closed kind of a drainage system. Now, what are the disadvantages of an open drain? Open drain actually pose danger to people in domestic animals, so that people without their notice would fall into them and get hurt or even drown. There was a recent case of uh, the rain water actually um, you know during the heavy rain couple of people actually flowed down through open drains and they were never found. So, you have to be very careful about the design and implementation of these kind of drains. They also cause soil erosion because the edges of uncemented ones continue to wear out. They are unslightly due to accumulation of rubbish, so very smelly due to the accumulation of wastewater not being cleaned constantly. So, open drains are supposed to be cleaned uh, you know um, progressively as the time progresses and pests can also breed in them. So, this becomes a health hazard. So, it might also encourage damping that is it provides a lot of danger to health and can cause stagnant water of floods which would result in accidents as I mentioned. Whereas, a closed drain has also certain disadvantages. Now, closed drain basically costs more to construct, it is expensive because it re needs a lot of excavation, it can withstand heavy loads on the street overheads and also requires expensive work such as manholes and inlets. The appurtenances needed for construction of a closed drain are much more when compared to an open drain. There could be a lot of construction defects, there could be deterioration and accumulation of debris or even sediments which would dif be difficult to monitor whereas, oh, an open drain it is very easy to monitor. The design, construction and maintenance of a closed drain requires more sophisticated engineering techniques by the city. Since closed drains are laid beneath the ground, a smaller drop in level to the receiving water body is available and that obtains sufficient slope to ensure self cleaning flow speeds. Mosquito breeding in closed drains is also very difficult to control. So, slowly moving sewage produces a lot of gases that can also attack the cement and concrete in a closed drain if it is not well ventilated. So, what happens to the rain water if it is not properly collected and disposed? The first thing that comes to our mind is nuisance and health hazards. So, what do we mean by nuisance and health hazards? So, for example, if all the rainwater gets collected into the storm water and we have 
started dumping all the waste. So, there, there are certain signages in many cities that you see dump no waste because this drains directly into the water or river. So, there could be wastages which come out of their kitchens, there could be pet waste, there could also be a lot of garden waste that is actually coming in and uh, entering into our storm water which is basically um, exiting at the end product or the outfall which are the lakes and rivers. So, the drainages are going to create a lot of health hazards for us if they are not checked periodically. So, how do we check them? We check them by trying to put up some kind of uh, drain downs. So, right at the entrance of the rain water if they are drowned there and then possibly also check for any kind of leaking hot waters because if they are leaked into the storm water even that would create some kind of issues or burst pipes or even if your kitchen sinks are blocked. So, these are various signs that come to us when a storm water needs some kind of maintenance. So, unblocking the toilet or a leaking toilet or a bursting of main pipe all these are drain collapses or because of blocked drains. So, these are various ways in which we get signs or uh, you know triggers upon which we can see and monitor our whole management of storm water. Now, the next thing that comes to our mind is recharge. Now, what is recharge? Recharging of storm water is equally important to us to actually understand that uh, storm water is also one of the most celebrated terms and that should be thought of right in terms of its entrance. Okay. Recharge basins basically temporarily store all the runoff, but they release that portion of the runoff by infiltrating it into the ground. So, this runoff gets infiltrated into the ground water and starts recharging the ground water. The storage level of this level should be thought of and should be re released by an outlet structure which is designed to bypass all the excess flows. So, a basin could be designed an online basin or an offline basin to maintain the function of an infiltration recharge basin and also to avoid any kind of soil compaction. Otherwise, all the water which is existent at the ground would evaporate through transpiration uh, also called as evapotranspiration. So, how do we do that? We could provide a suitable you know interceptor at various points. These interceptor wells could be designed at sites where water tables are within 5 meters of ground surface and where all the soils are stable. So, when the demand of water is low for smaller communities, we can use the same water which has been collected through storm water runoffs. And they should not be installed in areas where water drainage is rapid that is should not be provided at coastal areas. Since infiltration wells have a low infiltration capacity, the drainage rate will be insufficient and will make it possible to reduce the risk of erosion. So, this is one method in which we can actually recharge our storm water. So, what are the advantages of recharging storm water? Advantages are they are it is slower to actually build up than making a fully lined well due to the less lining which is needed for infiltration well. The construction is speedier when compared to the fully lined well. It is good for low yielding aquifers since it is a low tech option. Villages can also participate in its construction and this less supervision is required. The disadvantages are not much water is available for extraction as compared to the traditional wall and it cannot easily intake the maintenance in case of any kind of problems and you cannot line it as you dig therefore, most of the soil concerns are not stable there. Now, how do we harvest rain water or harvest storm water? Rain water which is collected to storm waters can be collected at some kind of a filter chamber which is also called as a desilting come filter chamber and introduced into a recharge well. Now, these recharge wells are actually placed below the ground against the flow of the rain water. 
so that uh, a baffle wall is constructed so that the water does not enter into the storm uh, the you know dust and pollutants also do not enter but only the right kind of water enters and then it gets collected here while it gets collected we start harvesting the runoff water and how is the harvesting done here? The following activities should be thought of while harvesting the runoff. One is identify the kind of drains that you are doing in while uh, collecting all the domestic drainage. Amongst all the drains, take up those drains which are located closer to open and closed, uh, sorry, cl uh, large open spaces. A small dwarf wall of 2 feet height should be constructed within these drains, something like this, like a baffle wall. Okay. At a few points and the flow should be intercepted and taken at right angles to reach at the wells of 5 feet diameter to 15 feet diameters. And they should be located above the mentioned pri private or public premises abutting them. So, you see. This is how we are basically put up the uh, walls and once the drains are closer to any kind of tanks, we can close them straight away and discharge them into the tanks through a desilting chamber of suitable dimensions and provide water to our, uh, you know, uh, for all our uh, other uh, facilities. In all the other drains, recharge the wells of uh, Recharge wells of at least 3 feet diameter and 10 feet diameter depth can be dug right at the drains at an interval of 30 feet. And these wells should be located right below the manholes, covers and provided at the top of the drain to enable periodic cleaning as well as desilting. When this happens, the storm water drains which are running closer to playgrounds and parks can also be utilized in the same way as mentioned above. It is to be noted that all the parks would already have large size such dug wells, which if desilted and connected to the storm water can receive huge quantities of rain water and this can actually harvest and bring forward a lot of consideration for us in terms of recharge of ground water, in terms of harvesting all the rain water that comes through. With this we end hierarchy runoff and the various drainage systems. Thank you so much for, the, for being with this.